someone had asked to see some of the modifications that I've made relative to towing, and I thought that was a great idea for a video. It's but the first thing I want to do is show you my first uh, uh, modification that I made, which wasn't exactly for towing, but has ended up working out well for towing, which is my Alpine Halo 9 ILX F309 is the number on that, and I'll try to put a link to uh, my video on that, which also contains links to all the parts you needed to install that. So if I click on the camera, I'm in park right now. Now we've got a shadow back there, so it makes it hard to see. There are a few things I was able to do. One is the camera in this Tundra is off just a little bit. And so I was able to adjust the lines on the Kandra camera. Now, if you see, here's my hitch right here. You can see this blue line exists as I'm looking at, at it just to the left of it. But what's hard to make out is that, uh, or that's the coupler, the hitch is right here. And so this, uh, this little yellow circle here, I was able to adjust. And that little top yellow dot there points right to the top of my hitch. And so as I'm moving forward and back, and so we're in reverse, and if I'm gonna remove slowly back toward the hitch, I can do that. And I know here that why I'm gonna be right on it with this blue line, I need to move it to the left. And, but if I need to readjust and I go into drive, one of the nice things is my camera doesn't go off. I don't have to wait for it to restart. I can go back and forth between uh, drive and reverse into neutral and the camera never leaves. The camera stays on the whole time. That's been tremendously helpful in terms of hitching up the truck. To show you without the travel trailer. So, so you can see now I'm going forward. I have my camera on slow speeds and you can see I can see everything behind now, me. One of the other things I like about the camera is if I go to it while I'm in drive I can look at my setup in the rear again. We've got the sun we're facing uh, due south and it's midday and so the sun is hitting us directly in the face right now so it's a little harder to see behind us. Um, certainly if it's nighttime we can light that area up or if we're driving down the road and we're, we're not heading directly into the sun why we can see behind us very very well and I've certainly shot some video of myself towing uh, with this on maybe I'll try to find that somewhere to include it to show you what it looks like there but another thing this will do as we switch out of it here is if we go to this vehicle info now the vehicle info is nice what it'll do here too it's I've just turned the vehicle on so it's calculating my PSI's right now but I can go to gauges and I can change this for various things. As you can see here, I have range. It's telling me what my approximate range is and I can reprogram that. We all know the Tundra reads empty with about six to seven gallons left. And when I've only got about two gallons left is when this will reach uh, zero. Actually, I've also got my transmission fluid temperatures here. As you can see, that's climbing slowly as we're just sitting here idling. And then I can get here instantaneous MPGs and my percentage load. Uh, my overall miles per gallon here um, uh, for the trip, etc. And then you can change these things. You can go to, so if there's something else you want to know about when you tow, why if, if you go to car settings here and then you go select gauges, you can pick your gauges and it'll give you so that center gauge, I can go to acceleration, I can go to my pedal position, my air to fuel ratio, feedback. braking distance I'll switch to sometimes, especially when it's wet out, I wanna know how I'm stopping. But it's, it's another uh, modification that came relative to this, combined with that uh, Maestro module that connects to the car's OBD2 port, and again, all this is kind of explained in another video that I'll link. And if you're interested in that, I would recommend you go ahead and check uh, it what out. What that won't do is it won't give me the instantaneous uh, pressures uh, down here. I can't get uh, that to set up and read, at least not the way I'm currently set up from my travel trailer. And so uh, a modification, if you will, this is about 50 bucks for this little time eight here. And I just leave this here all the time. I turn it off. Um, the travel trailer's sitting behind me. Let's see if I can get that. I can see it, but I don't think the camera's picking up. But there you can see it shows all four tires for the travel trailer. And you can set the temperature and the pressure. So my tires are all Goodyear's in, Goodyear Endurance that are set at 65 PSI. So I've got my, I think I've got my temperature set at about to go off at about 140, degrees, maybe it's 145 degrees Fahrenheit. Particularly if you're traveling in the desert Southwest, you're traveling at higher speeds, you'll see those pressures go up as you're driving and it's supposed to do that. Ideally, you wanna fill those um, uh, tire pressures at about 65 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit if you can to get them set at that 65 PSI. This is something that may be a little bit harder to see, 
but you don't see this and on the back of my head unit here because it uh, sticks out and projects I've attached some velcro here this is another modification that I've made for when towing and I'll show you what I've done so with that. this is uh, my Voyager camera uh, or, or it's the monitor for the camera in the back of the uh, travel trailer which really is priceless um, you can see it says press and hold pair button for five seconds I'm actually paired the but if you're not hooked up with your uh, seven pin connector and then your lights also have to be on and once you hook up to the seven pin connector and your lights are on this will come in and show so an image if I do this if I go like this and I go to the camera now we're in the camera mode and I hit reverse. I'm gonna reverse up till I get pretty close to that hitch because I don't want to bump into it. As you can see, I'm backing up kind of slow. Gets to be right about there. It's plenty close enough. So now what I'm gonna do is pause and go out and hook up. So now you can see what I've done. You can see it's stretched a little bit, but here's the line for my seven pin connector. It's right there. And you can see we're still not showing anything on the screen, but I'm gonna go ahead and flip my lights on here. And now it'll take just a few seconds. Uh, I mean, you can, uh, once you turn the headlights on and the running lights, now I'm picking up everything that's behind my travel trailer here. So that's the way this works. So I can have traffic behind me, which makes this priceless when you're traveling down the road, especially on the interstate for passing or for seeing what's coming when you have a slowdown, etc. Making sure there's nobody over there to the left when you want to get over and yet you've completely passed somebody to the right. So when if I'm passing a semi, I've got my camera set so that when they show up in my camera here, I know I've cleared their, cleared their front end by a significant enough margin that it's safe for me to get over. Now, what I did here, if you'll look, that Velcro, so I put the corresponding piece of uh, Velcro right here. I, take, I took this little piece of poplar and I disconnected the, the bracket for the camera and mounted it with those two little bolts to this piece of poplar and then with this Velcro in the front. So it sticks to the Velcro in the back of the camera and it sits right there when I drive. That was just a really convenient place to mount and now when I'm here, this is my view and I can see the readout right here for the tires on the, the travel trailer. Um, they don't have any reading right now because they're not moving. And I have right here, I have uh, that camera for the rear. And then of course this one down here, if I wanna see what's going on there or if I wanna switch back to my vehicle info. And then I'm back here looking at everything I was looking at before. So really useful modifications for when you're towing, really good for safety, priceless for being able to change lanes safely. Now looking underneath the truck here, you can see I've got my rear TRD sway bar. This helps with sway, it helps with body roll of this truck. This truck has a lot of body roll. Now when I'm hooked up to my travel trailer, it's not such a big deal because the weight distribution hitch seems to put enough downward pressure that it gets pretty stable. Now when I'm towing my boat and I don't have my boat, uh, I, when I take that back and forth to the lake, I don't have a weight distribution hitch hooked to that. When I'm, I'm moving the boat, that uh, sway bar helps this truck feel a lot more planted on the ground and makes towing that a lot more stable. As you can feeling. see here, what I'm using is the Fastway E2 hitch with four point sway control. It attaches to those arms that you see there right underneath the uh, uh, propane tank there. These uh, L-shaped arms that attach right here to the side. And what happens is there are uh, arms that rest on that. And there's also a two point round bar. I've used both. Um, they, I, for the size travel trailer I use, I think they're pretty equivalent. The four point costs a little bit more. I don't know that it's necessarily worth it. I've been just as happy with the, the round bar when I use that one as well. In addition to the sway bar, you can see that we've added some airbags. Now the airbags, when I drive around with those in general, I leave them inflated at five to 10 PSI and I inflate them to 30 PSI when I now, travel. I had these relocated to just one Schrader valve. So what I did was the two pieces of piping, theoretically you would have one coming out here, one coming out here that actually wanted you to mount it to the lower part of the frame down here. I just drilled a hole through the uh, plastic part of the bumper here and teed them and ran them into one valve. I don't really ever carry uneven loads. This allows me to flight one uh, and it, it goes a little bit quicker for me that what way. What I want you to note is the height of my wheel well here is right at about 39 and a half inches. And what I'm gonna do is go ahead and inflate my airbags and show you how that changes. Now we're at uh, 
30 psi and you can see we're at about 40 and a quarter inches let's go ahead and keep inflating and we'll see where we get to now we're at 70 psi and you can see we're at about 41 and a half inches so we've gained almost two inches by inflating up to that point right there we go ahead and set this back down and explain what goes now, on before i set this down what i want to show you is this is a curt round bar hitch and i actually have arms that go to this that are rated for 14,000 and I don't ever tow anything 14,000 pounds with my Tundra just happen to have that hitch now you see right in here are these little washers and depending on how many washers you have it puts tilt in your hitch and then when you hook the arm up to it that's what determines how much leverage is lifted back onto the front end of the truck there are several uh, uh, manufacturers that explain this in really well detailed videos but the most important thing to note here is that what you don't want to do is get your hitch set then inflate your bags until you're level you always want to set your bags first so it takes a little bit of tinkering to get that set just right for me it happens to be about 30 psi which is where my truck will sit level and my travel trailer will sit level and they'll ride nicely together at that 30 psi with enough weight put back onto the hitch and there are a couple ways to measure that the first way to make sure your weight distribution hitch is set up correctly this is explained in several manufacturers videos is to go do the same thing at the front wheel well is you take a measurement and here you can see i'm at oh right about 37 and 3 8 there right at the center portion of the hub to the tight of the wheel well and then what i would do is load my travel trailer on the back end with the hitch but not install the weight distribution arms and then what would happen is the wheel well will lift up and <clears throat> if however much it lifts up let's say it lifts up uh, an inch and a half what you want to do is adjust your lever arms so that you get that inch and a half back uh, and at that point the vehicle should the vehicle should be fairly level and you should also have an adequate amount of weight redistributed to the front end so that your tires on the front maintain contact. Now, the more accurate way to do this is to go ahead and load your entire vehicle up with everything you're going to be hauling, get a full tank of gas, and go drive through the CAT scale. They'll give you a printout number that will show you how much weight is on uh, your front axle, how much weight is on your rear axle, and how much weight is on, on your trailer axles if they're there. And that will tell you how your weight is distributed a whole lot better. What you want to make sure is that you don't have any weight beyond your rear axle loaded on that and I'm at uh, 4150 on this truck for that and I'm at 4000 in the front so I want to make sure those numbers come in about the same and what I want to do and what I do is I also weigh my vehicle unladen I weigh it without the trailer first and that tells me what my stock amount is on that front axle and what I want to look is that I've restored that weight to that front axle as close as possible so that those tires are maintaining good contact to the ground as we're and traveling. I debated with the idea of putting on true tow mirrors or putting on these snap-ons there are a few reasons I ended up with the snap-ons. One was I didn't want to lose any of the original functionality and I know there are some options out there where I can get that functionality back but the other is, is let me back up here again so I have a single door entryway to my garage. I can fit in with literally about an eighth of an inch on either side of those mirrors and squeeze into my garage. So a true tow mirror is gonna be in the same vicinity as that clip-on mirror. And so rather than have to deal with that every time I go in and out of the garage, what I decided to do was just use these clip-on mirrors. And let me show you that a little bit closer. Here's the way I use these clip-on mirrors. Now, if you see, there's my regular mirror, and then there's the part that came with the clip-on mirror, which is the whole section to the left. But then right about there, where my finger's at, I added this little convex mirror. And that little convex mirror gives me much better view down the side of my vehicle and down the side of my travel trailer so that I can see behind me a whole lot better. It gives me a better visualization on what's not just one lane over for me, but two lanes over from me. And you see one over there too. Now the interesting thing about these mirrors is the extra mirror right here, this piece right here, is that when I'm driving, that piece vibrates and it doesn't really give me a clear image of what's going on. And even though this convex piece is attached to this piece up here, for some reason, this piece doesn't vibrate and gives me a very, very good clear image of what's going on. So it was a way I was able to add those for towing and then I'm able to snap them on and snap them off very quickly so that when I'm around town and home and not towing anything, I don't need to have them Look on. Look at some of the other modifications I've made down here by the bed to help 
with towing. Now, as you can see, my bed, um, I have a spray in bed liner that probably looks like it chews up about, oh, three sixteenths of an inch there. And I'm still at uh, 22 half and a half inches um, up uh, to the top edge of my bed there, which is great because if we look at my Predator generator, it's right at about 20.5 inches. Why is that significant? Well, depending on what kind of tunnel you have, you might not be able to close over a generator of this height. Specifically, I've talked about the new Tundra's bed being shallower, and I know some people have bought that and they take offense to some of my reviews on that and say, well, that's personal to you. Well, you're right, it is personal to me, and I like to use my truck, and one of the things I do is I travel with a generator. I wanna have room for it. This truck bed allows me to have room for it. That new one, it'd be questionable whether or not I could have room for it and actually cover it up with the tonneau. So, one of the other things I'm able to do as you can see that this predator is on wheels now it will slide back and forth there's a lock for the wheels but these wheels are plastic against this spray and bed liner what will happen is it'll scoot across so one of the other things i've done is i've added this after or well it is aftermarket but this is from toyota this is a custom fit tundra bed mat and this bed mat is a little rubbery gives a little bit more stick to these wheels so that when i lock them it doesn't slide around quite so much i still pack some soft things in around it to keep it in place the other thing it allows me to do is i keep it pretty much in this position here i have a heavy uh toolbox that i usually travel with right here adjacent to it and then what i do is when i need to run it i just move that toolbox out of the way so i have a place to vent right here from the exhaust and then i have enough room over here on this side to go ahead and uh, connect my uh, cord right there and so this is a modification I've made to my bed and then my kids made me this a few years ago, which was really handy actually um, for my truck. It's a thinner piece of wood. It looks like it's a three quarter inch piece of wood that they painted black and mounted to these, uh, what looks like uh, one by threes here, I guess. Anyway, it fits into the spot very nicely. Allows just enough room for that generator to sit there and work and I'm able to travel with it. Another modification I made more recently was right here. I added this step. I travel a lot. I can get into the bed, I've shown that video, but boy, this step makes it easier for me. It also makes it a lot easier for my wife whose legs aren't quite as long as mine. And so now when she wants to come out and get something, she's able to come in here too. This tonneau cover that I have, and so I load a lot of stuff up in here. I've had this tonneau cover since I bought the truck. It's four years old now. It is by Tiger, that's T-Y-G-E-R. It is a simple uh, trifold tonneau cover, but I gotta tell you, I've never had a drop of water leak through this thing. It's been fantastic. What I do get in the Tundra though, when that's closed and when I'm traveling, and what I can tell you is that snow and dust will draft through the back back here and will cake the inside. I found when I travel off grid and I go, let's face it, a lot of dusty, uh, dirty places when you travel off grid that that dry desert dust will draft back here too and and fill this part of the bed up as well with a bit of dust so my predator is a little bit dirty because that's what's happened recently we went to southwest texas and indeed we got covered in dust now, one more change i've made for safe traveling when i um, go out and i tow is something i did just recently right before i shot this video is has to do with this lug right here so this lug used to be a keyed lug that you needed a special socket for. And the problem was if you lost that socket, there's no way to get your wheel off without going to the manufacturer and getting them, giving them your VIN and allowing them to give you a new socket that will unlock that wheel. Now these are stock wheels. I don't know who's worried about their stock wheels getting stolen, but I can tell you on my Tundra, nobody's out there stealing stock wheels. And here's the problem with that. On my last trip, I didn't notice I'd had my brakes changed and what will sometimes happen is you go in, maybe you're having your tires rotated, you're having your brakes changed. Sometimes the mechanic can be busy that can accidentally get thrown into their toolbox. And that's indeed what happened to mine. I got back, I had damage to my uh, right front tire. I needed to go ahead and get that replaced. And I called and made my tire appointment, went out to check on my uh, socket for those locks and realized I didn't have it. Now I've always hated that and I think it's a silly thing to have, but it's something I think if you're going to tow, you're going to be going long distance, you're going to be going quite a ways off grid like I do, you're going to want at the very least to be able to change a tire safely without having to call a tow truck and have your vehicle put onto a wrecker just because you don't have the right socket for it. So I think that does it for the bulk of the modifications and the changes that I've made to my vehicle so that I can tow a little bit more securely and a little bit safer. I know there may be some confusion on how I use the 
uh, ride right airbags by Firestone coupled with my weight distribution hitch. And of course there are videos out there saying, no, you should never use the airbags. You should only use the weight distribution hitch. I'm gonna tell you that's not entirely correct. What you need to do is get your bags set about where you think you need them first. And for me, using a travel trailer between six and 7,000 pounds, it's about 30 PSI on the ride right airbags to keep my rear end from squatting and to have adequate weight distribution back to the front end.